Now that I've removed the old lead and cleaned the lead that's still there, I'm going to cut my glass um, to, to fit the, the pieces that need replacing. I've cut all my glass so I'm making a jig to uh, prepare the way to um, lead in the new pieces. Having replaced the missing glass in the bottom panel, I'm now preparing the top panel so that I can join the two together. So I need to remove these big lumps of solder because they're going to get in the way of the piece of lead I'm going to use to join them together. And I'm using my lead snips to do that. So this top panel now will sit into the fresh outside piece of lead, which is 12 mil flat lead. So I'm just opening the channel up with my FID, that white plastic tool you saw me use. Um, and now I'm just gonna wiggle it into place so that it fits the uh, piece of lead that joins the top and the bottom and into the edge piece. Sometimes it takes a bit of uh, work you've got to keep opening up the channel of lead especially where the solder joints are uh, 
Um, and now I'm going to finish by trimming the top lead. There you saw me do that with my lead knife and um, carrying on leading the outside edge with my 12 mil flat. You see me hold it all in place with my horseshoe nails. Now every joint needs to be rubbed with um, flux, which is, a, I use a tallow candle, that's traditional in stained glass. And without that, your solder won't take to your joints. It stops the heat oxidizing the metal and making the surface unresponsive. I'm also making sure all the lead is pushed down against the glass. Here's the tallow. And now I start to solder. The soldering's finished now, so I've removed the jig and I'm going to cement the panel. Um, cementing is where you rub a, a, a sort of putty in between the glass and the lead, and that's what will make this window um, weatherproof. You can buy this putty, but it goes off quite quickly, so I prefer to make my own. So you need whiting, which is a sort of like a chalk dust, and plaster of Paris, and linseed oil, and white spirit, and black pigment. Um, the proportions are double whiting to plaster of Paris, and equal amounts of linseed oil and white spirit. It's boiled linseed oil, and you get it from any DIY store. The pigment you get from art supply shops and I buy it in a powder form. So you mix it up until you get a sort of goo. Um, and different people like different consistencies. I like mine quite soft. Um, some people like it really stiff. Um, but I like if it's if it's a little bit runny, then when you scrub it in between the glass and the lead, it works its way through a little easier. But then you might have to spend a bit more time cleaning it up afterwards. And when you scrub it into the panel, it's good to have a really really hard brush because what that will do is it will scarify the surface of the lead, produce lots and lots of little scratches, and the pigment from the cement 
gets into the lead and helps to darken the lead because the lead starts off bright and for that traditional dark lead look you need to get pigment into the surface of the of the lead um, and then to get the beautiful bloom at the end I'll show you how to polish it up but this this stage of the job um, is quite hard work and it's quite messy because once you've rubbed all the cement between the glass and the lead. You then scatter whiting over the surface of the panel and that will absorb all the excess liquid and help you clean the excess cement off the surface. I keep saying cement, don't be confused with the sort of cement you're used to hearing about. This is just what we traditionally in stained glass call this kind of putty. So I'm doing the other side and I'll put whiting on that side. The whiting having then soaked up the extra uh, liquid, the linseed oil and the white spirit, um, you then be begin with another stiff brush to scrub that whiting into the surface of the glass and the lead. And that will take off the excess 